Aloha, and welcome to another program, A Better Day. I'm State Senator Sam Sloan, and thank you so much for tuning in and spending some time with us. Look, we got an interesting program. The legislative session is over, the regular session, so you only have to keep one hand on your wallet or your purse. <laughs> but there's still a lot of things going on, and I've got two fine gentlemen to discuss some of the things that have gone on and that you can expect in the coming weeks ahead. First of all, our veteran state representative, minority leader in the state house, Representative Gene Ward. Gene, always a pleasure to see you Thank and spend you time with you. Thank you for having me on. And also to my left, somebody that's no stranger to Hawaii, to sports or politics, business, and that's Fred, uh, Fred Hemmings, who was formerly a state senator. I hear rumors he may try to come back again and visit with us because we're such a friendly group. Hi, Fred. Welcome. Well, thank you, Sam. Yeah, I have been on the sidelines, and quite frankly, I miss the process. It's, a, it's an interesting situation here in Hawaii that demands a, a lot of change, I guess would be the yeah. word. Yeah, change. Well, that's I miss seeing you two guys together. We, we do, too. <laughs> right? We do, too. Change, change. That's what everybody talks about. You know, some people, they wonder, why is this program called A Better Day? Well, Gene Ward knows because our governor... When he took office in his first uh, speech, he talked about a new day. Uh, Governor Lingle talked about a new beginning. But look, all of that is great. But what we really want in Hawaii, what we really need, is a better day. Better day economically and socially and politically and everything else. Well, look, we had a, a rip-roaring legislative session. Some people on the, on the sidelines, they thought it was pretty quiet this year, only because they were comparing it with last year and first year of a new administration and all of that. But this was an election year, and there were still a lot of important bills. Why don't you take us through those, Gene, some of the things that you thought were the highlights or, before, or the lowlights? Before I get to the trees, something from the forest. Let me say a from couple the of forest. things. Okay. You know, in medical school, they teach you uh, the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm. In a way, this session was kind of a do-nothing session, but it didn't do the harm that I think some of the previous sessions had done, like, for example, the last session, 2011, we raised taxes, $600 million. Mm -hmm. uh, people are now just realizing their voter, their uh, car registration is double. It's like, wow, how did that happen? There are some fee increases that are probably going to be a little bit of a sticker shock. But generally speaking, when we started the session, Sam, Fred, we kept saying jobs, 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 the economy, the economy. I think it was disappointing in the sense of what we turned out. We turned out a few things, and I'll mention those, but I don't think overall we really delivered on the economic promises that we kind of got people psyched up for. Uh, case in point, we've got a chance for diversification. We've got space tourism as an option. After three sessions, we're finally going to get a license for the Honolulu International Airport, Kaleloa, to be a space tourism uh, airport. Uh, actually able to take planes vertically, go up to a orbit, and then basically come down weightless, which is a diversification of space and tourism together. I yeah. thought maybe that would be something with the Department of Health and Obesity, you know, to be weightless uh, too. I know you want to be on that first flight. But there's no sugar drinks. No sugar drinks. Those, uh, right. <laughs> but on the big island, there's the Lunar Research Park that, that's been approved, which as you guys know, and maybe some people have heard, that NASA is in love with the big island. NASA is in love with Mauna Kea. If you want to see the moon, look at Mauna Kea. You want to see Mauna Kea, see the moon. You've got it together. And because basically with the Obama administration, space has been privatized, it's to where now it's up to the private sector, the Lockheeds, the Boeings, and all of the other uh, people that are going to be coming and doing this research for sustainability. If you're going to go into space, you've got to have your own electricity, your own food, your own water. And basically, the Big Island has already the kernels beginning of that, and we're going to do it in a larger scale. You know, so that's you, exciting. You, you made a, a point about uh, private industry, private development in the space industry. And I know Fred knows because I mean, decades ago, we had the opportunity to have a space launch point on the Big oh, the, Island. The vertical launch is right. I, but, I, uh, but now you've got a company like SpaceX, which not only was theoretical, but they showed us how to do it, how to, to, how to land cargo. Uh, on the spaceport, and they've got horizontal. Yeah, right? and, and they've got competition. They've got other companies that, that are bidding for that. So I think that's fantastic. And those of us that believe in the free market and competition, we've said that from the very beginning. Let the free market do it. They can do it cheaper, faster, more efficiently, and, and more productively. No doubt about it. And uh, I was in the House of Representatives in the 80s, 
-hmm. And I was one of the leading proponents and advocates of, first of all, geothermal energy, but relating to space, a space launch port. And I actually uh, uh, planted a seed with the governor at that time, Why Hay, and he included it in his State of the State speech. And I don't even remember Doc Byers from Sea Brewer. Sea yeah. Brewer has a lot of land there. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who may not know in Hawaii, uh, the southeast flank of the Big Island is the best place in the world for simultaneous equatorial and polar launches. In other words, we launch uh, equatorial from Florida and we launch polar from uh, California, uh, Vandenberg. But it, the south point of the Big Island is the best and we get more lift. Uh, the Atlas Centaur rocket, which was being used to take our hardware into space uh, back in the 80s, gets 25% more lift from the Big Island because it's closer mm. to the equator. Mm. So there's all kinds of efficiencies. We have a deep draft harbor. We have a recovery, uh, you know, uh, Hilo Airport has a runway that can recover craft coming down. So Hilo could li literally be the gateways to the stars. Uh, what's happening on Mauna Kea is actually looking into the, the birth of, of the universe itself, the things that are too big for us to even it's comprehend. It's one of the few examples where we actually do have the infrastructure right now. We, had, we, we certainly have the brain power and the capabilities and the resources. What's, what's been missing, and what's been missing is the political will and leadership yep. yes. to do it. Amen. And I remember it's the same thing with geothermal. Uh, a, a couple of uh, uh, hard-headed, uh, alleged environmentalist uh, guys that are probably growing, uh, you know, smoking pot in the bushes up there. Uh, because they had headaches and they called it medical marijuana back then. <laughs> <laughs> but the bottom line is that you had a few recalcitrant people and I might add a, a couple of very negative uh, Hawaiians that basically said, oh, we're not gonna do, you know, we're not gonna do this and nothing happened. With this, Gene, Hawaii could be the best place in the world. People trying to get things into space for whatever reasons, mm. uh, scientific, medical, or anything else, could have been coming to Hawaii for all these years, but the door's still there. The, the resource is still there, that's the infrastructure, the that's and, the good news. And yeah. hopefully this will leverage that the same way that now the signs are all go for doubling the amount of geothermal, mm -hmm. which is a very good sign given that it's only 30% yeah. right now. But but we yeah. have to, uh, I remember the geothermal debate because I was I was in it back then and uh, the same people opposed geothermal are mm -hmm. opposing the spaceport. And we have to go back, they had to get 52 permits, Puna Geothermal to go online. Mm. And one of the things that should immediately be done by the state is no longer allow um, the county to charge a royalty. They charge them a, a, a minerals rights right. fee. They charge them a royalty to produce energy we need. So it's just another burden on, on a private sector to try to do something. Actually, illegal. that's in the Constitution. You discover gold under your house. It's not it's yours. No. The states. Yeah. You discover oil, geothermal. No, I don't think that. I think geothermal stretching it, Gene. I, I yeah, think, well, yeah. I, you know, I, yeah, I, well, the, the, the interesting pouring thing, water down a hole isn't exactly the, the interesting <laughs> thing too, Fred, is that harvesting a mineral. You know, yeah, a number of people that that did that did uh, uh, oppose geothermal. Now there have been new agreements where they get some of the money. So you know, when all is said and done about almost any issue in Hawaii, unfortunately. It's about the money. It's not about the keiki. It's not about outer space. Oh, yeah. It's about the money, and oh, that's that's what we're doing. Exactly. But the good news is we've got the opportunities, and because we've had economic problems and we're looking for diversity, we probably have a better window now than we did before. Well, you know, I'm, I've been on the sidelines for two years on the legislative process, and uh, there's one word I can summarize these last two years. It's redundancy. Nothing big or new has really happened. It's been redundant. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. This last session was was a, a placekeeper, you know, let's not rock the well, boat Gene, too much. You, yeah, you followed many yeah. of the bills during the session, and what what stands out in your mind? Gee, you know, depending on which perspective you look at it, if uh, from the Hawaiian community perspective, it's probably the OHA settlement, the $200 million, which for the claim since 1978 and Cayetano, that being paid in terms of land at Kaka'ako, that's probably a uh, stake in the ground, a, a line in the sand for what designates the session. What my greatest uh, happiness of the session was, in addition to these uh, space uh, exploration for things, was that people out there who haven't got PV on the roof yet will not be punished to do it. I was so fearful that right now we've got renewable energy, 3% of our grid comes off of renewable energy, 3%. Mm -hmm. And many of our colleagues, Sam, were wanting to shut that down, cap it, cut it to where the, the incentive would be, only the millionaires would be left to actually put PV on the roof. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was such a, a, a bad decision. Fortunately, it failed. Yeah. I'm sure next year it may come back again. Well, you know, the, the, the other part of that argument, though, and, and we've had this for years, okay, all of us at this table are for clean alternative energy. No question about that. Where the rub comes in is when the government says, okay, we're going to force you 
to put this on your roof or to do this outside or, or whatever. Uh, and Fred, I know you've been involved in, in alternative energy for years. You've been talking about nuclear energy, and we can't even put that on the table and discuss right. it. You know, it's really amazing because people say, oh, nuclear energy, you know, the Constitution forbids it. First of all, it doesn't need two-thirds approval of mm. both the House and the Senate. Right. That's right. But we already have nuclear energy here, and they're called <laughs> nuclear submarines, and they've been running <laughs> safer. More people have died in coal mine accidents that have done and died in one coal mine accident in the history of nuclear energy in this country. So there's great potential there. But the more immediate problem with solar voltaic, and it has a long-term problem, it's not what they call firm capacity. And mm. the, the real beneficiary, believe it or not, of solar energy is Hawaiian Electric. They have a monopoly and because they have to maintain firm capacity they get a fee for doing that. They're not producing electricity but they get what they call a standby fee or spinning reserves you know yep. because they have to ha be ready in case the sun's not shining for a week. Uh, they can crank up the juice and get your electricity if your solar voltaic's not there because it's not firm capacity and the same applies with wind. So once again, we're in a situation where a monopoly, a for-profit monopoly, which is antithetical to everything we believe in in free enterprise, mm -hmm. is, is the beneficiary. Wouldn't you like to be in business, have a, a government-protected monopoly and a government-protected rate of return? Government-guaranteed no profit. Government-guaranteed profit. No and, risk. And, and here we are. And no competitors. July 1st, electric rates went up again. Water rates went up again. Um, sewer rates went up again. All are monopolies, all are, are government controlled. The interesting thing, you know, I always tell people, look at your electric bill every month. You should look at all of your bills. Look at your electric bill. Look down all the list of surcharges and add-ons and things like that. Here's the amount of electricity that you're being yeah, charged you're paying for. More for. Everything else are all these surcharges in government, so you're absolutely right about well, that. You know, it's even worse, gentlemen, is that the, the, our electric bill the national average is one third, so we're paying 33, 34 cents a kilowatt hour. The national average is 10, 11 cents a kilowatt hour. And what's add insult to injury with all this, you know, solar voltaic and all these wonderful things we have to be, you know, carbon free emission electricity generation, we're last in the nation for, for burning oil and gas. We're 93 percent mm -hmm. of our energy yeah. comes from oil and gas. So and we've gone that's, backwards, Sam. That's right. That, that is frightening. Yeah. And if well, we're serious, the words everybody talks about it. You know, oh, gee, we're we're leading in this and, and we're on the cutting edge of that and all that. And then we also look at how our federal government and how our federal administration has taken our money and invested it, meaning spending, and giving it, given it to uh, alternative startups who have failed and lost the money. Yeah. And they didn't lose the president's money or the Congress's money, they lost the taxpayers' yeah, money. Exactly right. And so when you talk about investment, let me be free to make the investment that I want for myself and, and my business and my family. That's not what's going on. Well, I've got an, I, I wanted to put, post this to both of you as a legislative initiative. There, there's a huge problem with unemployment compensation in this country, and we keep paying people, able-bodied citizens, money to stay home and not work. So there's not much of an incentive to get a job if you can make ends meet between unemployment compensation mm. and other, other quote-unquote entitlements. Well, especially you, Sam. What do you, what do you think about after, let's say, a month of unemployment, you get a, an employment voucher that's the same face value as your unemployment check, Mm -hmm. But you ha you can only get it if you give it to a, a actually your, your an employer and the employer employ employs you, and he collects it. So in other words, you're paying someone to hire you. They get whatever that voucher is worth. Compensation. I, I think that's an interesting concept, and, and the problem is we haven't looked at any options or alternatives. And look, the three of us remember when first of all, you if you were on unemployment, um, you didn't want to be, and you didn't want people to know. And then you had to go down to the office. And then you had to make calls and actually look for a job. You don't do any of that today. I mean, they just send you the money, basically. And then the Congress keeps extending them out. That's 26, what I mean. 26 weeks, 52 weeks, 96 weeks. And that's a lot of money. And then you add to that rent supplements, health supplements, food supplements. And, Why work? And, and we don't call anybody recipients, welfare recipients anymore. We call them clients because it sounds well, more you professional. Know, we, so we, your idea is worth exploring. Well, it really is worth exploring. Right yeah. now, let's say you get $500 a week or $2,000 a month in unemployment checks for staying home and not working. You take that voucher. You, can't, you don't get a cent. You take it to Sam's company and you give it to Sam. Sam has to give you that in the form of a salary mm -hmm. and plus mm -hmm. maybe you know, provide medical coverage. So you got a person who works who's now paying taxes and you're no longer in negative cash flow with just paying someone to stay home and do nothing. And the company gets up basically an employee for 
for free. Yeah. So it's a win I'd for like everybody. I'd like to see that written up for the 2013 session. Yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to uh, that. But I would also say that we are leaving our roots behind when we leave entrepreneurship as second option. Working for somebody versus working for oneself. Why is China going gangbusters? Capitalism and communism side by side because we got entrepreneurship functioning, mm -hmm. strong and indelible. We've got the same subcultures of super entrepreneurs here in Hawaii. We are not promoting them. We're th these are the job creators. 70% of all new jobs come out of small businesses. Small businesses are, f they're basically dying on the vine or trying they're, they're to survive. They're dying through You're regulations. Small business Hawaii. Come yeah. on, smart, smart business Hawaii. Regulations, we taxation. We don't push entrepreneurship. And there, there's That's one right. other bill right. to answer your first question. With, there's a new ventures training and training uh, fund, which for high-tech businesses, broadband, aerospace, film, digital, and agriculture, if they're in need of venture capital or training, this small $2 million is to stimulate the high-tech industry. Yeah, but see, there again, you're going to government to get that, and it's, it's government funding. What we really need to do is unleash the restrictions and the taxation on those people who have demonstrated it. They don't have to create both. jobs. We need both. Well, I, I don't we, think we have both. We, we it's don't like do when, it people, in balance. when people talk about a public-private partnership. <clears throat> you know, it sounds good. But technically, there is no partnership. When the government can tell you what you must do, who you must hire, what you must pay, what you have to do, and even what you can drink and what you can eat today. So that's part of the, the problem. And you know, you, you started at the outset talking about the about the, the legislative session, the first do no harm, and the fact that eh, there wasn't too much that happened. I look at a legislative session, just like I look at a congressional session. Did it a improve the livelihood of, of the people that pay for that government, number one? And number two, did it expand or contract the amount of personal liberty and personal choice? And on both these, you've got to say no in, in Hawaii. Mm. Got to say no. I mean, you can look at, at bills where people have been instrumental in very successful lobbying. And there are a couple bills that, that passed that really are not good bills, one of them being... Senate Bill 2424, the PEO, or oh. Professional Employer Organization, which all of us have, have asked the governor to, to veto. Um, it's not a business bill. It is a bill that serves one, perhaps two it's major a companies. Sweetheart deal. It, it is a barrier to entry. It in increased costs. It creates a surety bond. It creates conditions that none of the small competitors actually can get. For example, the surety bond, which they have to post to, to continue to do business. Um, the insurance companies in, in town, they've looked all across the country. There's no other state that requires that, number one. And number two, there's no insurance company that will issue that kind of bond. So what it means is that a small business will have to put up to 250,000 bucks of their own money, which they don't have, into a bank account, basically paying you know, to stay in business, and they won't be able the to do it if the governor doesn't veto it. The starter advertiser came out with veto this bill, Governor yeah. Abercrombie. The minority caucus, with every signature, sent in mm -hmm. to, to veto that bill. And you which, actually had 19 votes in the House altogether, right? Which, which meant there was already some momentum against yeah. it. But what do you think the probability is that uh, the governor is going to veto I'm it? hoping that, that the governor will veto that bill because, like I say, it does not advance the economy, does not advance small business, and it's an unfair bill, and it's a cruel mm. bill. So, you know, we can hope that that, yeah, that will happen. Downside. I guess the, quest the question for the, for the viewers is where did it come from and why? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was introduced in the Senate by State Senator uh, Baker from Maui, and I'm sure it came because there was uh, adequate uh, support and legislation from those businesses that would, would benefit benef would benefit from it. And we see this all uh, the time. Much in the House, I recall the uh, Labor Chair saying that it was to protect the small guys who were being hired by these, because if those companies took their money and ran, then they wouldn't be able to pay yeah, but their wages, which has never happened. It's never happened, and, so it's yeah. one and of nobody asked for it. No, none of the small people, I, I don't remember anybody, you know, coming before the, the state capitol with signs and banners, pass this bill, you know, hurt the small businesses. Nobody did that. Now, the downside is worse than the upside. What, what, what he gets out of it, having it pass, I think is minimal versus the downside, people are going to look really askance good point. at that bill. Yeah, good point. Anything else that we should be looking at? For uh, look at the... Because uh, the governor does have till July 10th uh, in order to sign, not sign, or veto bills. Uh, but he's got a... He's trivia question. Send out a list already. How much has the cost of living gone up in the last five years? Let's break it down. What's the cost yeah. of gasoline? What do you think the price of gas? 
Yeah, we're was, talking Hawaii? We're yeah, we're talking, talking Hawaii. Hawaii. Just Hawaii. 40%. 33%. Close. Yes. Mm-hmm. Electricity. Oh, electricity has gone up uh, 20%, but it was high. 50%. Anyway. Th- 32%. Ah. Yeah. And that's on top of we already being 30% above the well, living true. on the mainland. Right. right. And well, 200% the, above the national average the, in electricity. Fred, the, the, there's, there's a... A slow heating up, you know, the frog, if it's if boiling water jumps out, if you put it in, it gets comfortable, and you slowly heat up. You know, the people of Hawaii have been so patient with the cost of living, which has gone to such an extreme. And for the last five years, basically, we've been struggling to make those who are less fortunate to be able to survive. Yeah. And that's been the focus, not on creative, innovative, entrepreneurial thing. It's been getting through this economic recession, of which now you rightly say, let's focus on developing the economy. You know, let's for, get the, some jobs for the first... Going couple decades after statehood in 1959, Hawaii was going like gangbusters. I mean, our economy was thriving, we were diversifying, we were expanding, and still, when people stopped to look at it, we were paying, on average, about 35 to 40 percent more than the same comparable costs on the mainland. And what did everybody call it? What did they say? Shipping costs. Paradise cost. Oh, the oh, paradise, paradise, paradise right? The price yeah. of paradise. The co- and, and people bought that. But they use shipping as an excuse. Yeah, There's yeah, economy it, of scales. Right. The, but as long <laughs> as things were going well, uh, people kind of shrugged it off and, and, and they bought that. But guess what? Things have not been going well for the last four or five years, and they're not going well now. Those people that tell us, whether it's at the university or in the state administration, oh, we've turned the corner. Things are getting better right now. They're not. They may be for some people in some industries, and that's great. Everybody points to the visitor industry, which this year is having a record number of arrivals, record number of expenditures. But I had a, a, a meeting with David Carey of, of Outrigger, and he was saying, yeah, the, the arrivals are up like this at record levels, and the, the expenditures are up like this at record levels. But he says, what the thing that the media and the politicians don't talk about our costs are up at record levels. And so if you look at the, mm. at the marginal profit, mm. it's down. It's below what it was in 2006, 2007. But it's leading the recovery. That's the good thing about the business. Well, industry. If, and if we That's didn't have the visitor industry, oh. where would we be then? Relying more on the military, of which we have not certainly Can I make a prediction? And... Sure. Hawaii's number one industry is tourism. When I ask people what the mm. second biggest industry, they usually say the military, which yep. is partially right. Second big, biggest industry is the United States Senator Dan Inouye who brings military spending yeah, and all the other point. spending here. Yeah. When he's not there with his seniority, it's mm. not Dan by himself, it's the fact that he's just in the system where seniority speaks a lot and demands a lot as far as local needs go. When he's not there, uh, we're, we're going to be in big trouble because a lot of these military projects are going to go to places well, and, like and San Diego and other sure. places. And, and here's the problem, and I've been saying this for, for years now. I guess I'm trying to say, Sam, is military is not an industry it's just it's just a that, recycling of tax dollars sure, to, that, to that's Hawaii. a good point i mean it's coming out of our left pocket yeah, as opposed to exactly. our right pocket but look i've been saying this for years the state has relied on on senator inouye for so long now that they haven't done the due diligence what happens when he's not there what happens when world events change and we should be concentrating on that uh, on the future sure. and that's the kind of thing that we need to make it a better day look we're all positive. The three of us sitting at this table, we're very positive about Hawaii's future because we know we have the people, we have all kinds of things going on for us, and we've got opportunities. We've missed opportunities, though, in the past. We don't want to miss them again. We can't miss them again because, as Europe is showing us right now, there's going to be a paradigm shift or there's going to be a, a lot of unhappy people. So we've got very little time. How would you like to wrap up, and what do you want to leave our listeners and viewers with? Well, I was going to say there was another thing that's good news for your visitors and our viewers, and that is that the Internet tax that came up again failed. Yes. Eight Every, years in a row now. Everybody yeah. who buys on Amazon or whoever, whenever, was going to be taxed with the GT tax, and that, to me, is something that was probably not going to be very helpful. The other thing I want to go back to, Sam, is the photovoltaic, which, as I said, is only 3% on the grid. Yep. The incentives for solar water heaters have been in place for two and a half decades, mm-hmm. but right now only 30% of the people, theoretically just one of us on this at this table, has solar water heaters. I've got solar water here. Okay, no, I actually, I just got it a few months ago. <laughs> okay. My point is, yeah. unless we incentivize the people to do these kinds of things, to get off of fossil fuel, it's not yeah. going to happen. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah. the, the exciting stuff I'm all stuff for incentives. I don't want mandates and I don't want people yeah. punished <laughs> for something that a government bureaucrat thinks is and good. I agree. And the other last good news is that there's no State Bank of Hawaii. Abercrombie's oh, not going to yeah. be the chairman of board. Oh, of darn, I was looking here. forward to that, putting my money in that. Fred, final well, comments. I, I remain optimistic. Uh, I believe that we have a great well, fallow field here in many ways in Hawaii, but uh, good things can happen, but they're not going to happen by doing the same thing. And you mm -hmm. know what that definition yep. is. And, Hopefully, uh, we, the people of Hawaii will see the wisdom in, in breaking out in new directions, uh, especially when it comes to the economy, Sam. Uh, we have to. Yeah, we have a very punitive economy, and we have all the ingredients to have one of the most productive economies in the nation. We have a lot of blessings of nature and good people mm. and everything else. Mm. And uh, I, I remain optimistic. Well, I, I think the three of us are optimists. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. And primarily because we're optimistic about the people here and we all live here look we could live in other places we could do all kinds of other things but we live here and we want to make it better and we can make it better it can be better it no can be better and, and it's got to be we can do better yeah so look I, I think that we have reached a tipping point both nationally and locally and what's going to happen in the next couple months are going to be you know they're going to be very important issues and you can have a direct input in it don't let anybody tell you that you know, anything's a done deal, or you can't fight City Hall, or your vote doesn't count. It does count. Sam, Make sure I, you get involved. Can I, can I tell you what I tell kids that come to school really tell quickly? Tell us. When they, when they come and they ask me about government, I say, it's the most important thing in your life for many reasons other than your family and loved ones. And one of the reasons is because it's the most expensive thing you're going to pay for in your life. <laughs> That's right. So it takes more, about than, more than car, more yeah. than car and a half. 40% of your devotions. We want to thank all of you for joining us today. I want to thank Representative Gene Ward thank and you. Fred Hemmings. And we wish you a better day. We'll have contact information if you have any questions or comments or suggestions. Otherwise, we'll see you back here very soon. Aloha and have a great day.